Welcome to episode three of Building a Dark Ride. In this episode, I'm gonna walk you through the ride car electrical schematics, um, both the current version and the previous versions that have led me to the place where I'm at today. This is the oldest, simplest version. Uh, this is the version that I had my test rig configured with um, in the very beginning. Uh, when I first tested out my, uh, my first uh, car rig, uh, this is two 20, 24 volt motors connected up to a PWM hooked up to a switch that when it was thrown it would either be off or would send the motors in uh, forward or reverse depending on how it was uh, switched. Um, and running two 12 volt batteries uh, connected up that gave me 24, uh, 24 volts. Um, these were like uh, golf cart batteries and uh, this is pretty much the simplest way to do it. If you, if you hook it up like this using one of these PWMs, I, th I, got, I think I got one off of eBay for under 20 bucks. Um, this is, uh, I think, the simplest way to do it, and it works. Um, no remote control, obviously. Um, you have to, you know, physically interact with the switch in some capacity. Um, but this does work. The next version um, was when I wanted to actually step up and use some type of remote control. Um, what I did is I actually bought a, a standard three-channel remote control RC receiver, um, a transmitter combo um, online for, I think it was... 30 or 40 bucks came with that little device there that's kind of uh, diagrammed in there with three channels and I hooked it up to hooked up the this ESC that I bought off of eBay um, again this one's more expensive uh, this one I think cost me like 50 or 60 bucks um, but uh, it did have like a 20 uh, for up up to 24 volts uh, of power 40 30 or 40 amps um, and it was rated pretty good when I got it although I stayed in this version for a little while. I think I probably spent six months trying to get this set up to work. Um, and I think I went through three of these. I kept burning them out. They kept stopping to work. I eventually realized the need for an inline fuse, which you see the 30 amp fuse in there. Um, I learned the hard way about the need for that. Again, disclaimer, I do not know what I'm doing. I am um, figuring this out a lot of hours I go. I have no education in electronics it's all self-taught so uh, these are not actual electrical schematics these are just what makes sense to me um, so my my apologies for all you pros out there um, moving on to the kind of third version this is when I first started making it complicated this is like you know what I'm gonna do this for real I'm gonna control this thing with an Arduino uh, Uno uh, I'm gonna have all these buttons on the dashboard that can be overridden um, I have you know all these different meters to respond uh, to, to report voltage and amps used and um, strobe lights and how am I going to control the strobe lights and sound. I'm not going to spend time walking through this because I kind of changed this quite a bit too. Uh, I'm going to spend the most time talking about the current version, which is this version. This is the current version of the ride. I think this is gonna be the pretty close to final version of the ride for what I have for my first uh, show. Um, and I'm gonna walk you through this piece by piece. So let's start off with the batteries. Similar to my first version, it's just those two 12 volt batteries hooked up. Um, I installed a switch in between those to kind of control as like a master switch, um, which I'll kind of have on the outside back of the car um, to kind of just to control the main power. Um, from there, I have three different voltages. I have the 24 volts, obviously, that comes out of the battery. Um, I also have a, 12, a 24 volt to 12 volt step-down converter that gives me 12 volts because I have a few things that need 12 volts. I have a 12 volt to 9 volt step-down converter, which gives me 9 volts. And then the motor controller itself, actually, when that gets power, it has a way to output 5 volts. Um, so that actually gives me the power to my uh, Wemos devices, which are my Arduino compatible uh, boards. Moving on from that, like I just said, uh, two Arduino compatible boards, they're Wemos D1s. Um, and I also have a Windows 10 um, small cube PC um, that is also mounted on the inside. All that cube PC is for is for audio. Um, all three of those devices are all uh, connected up to the Wi-Fi network. And that's how um, all the different communications will be sent to the car, uh, to and from the car. Um, the ride itself will be controlled uh, with essentially over the over the Wi-Fi mainly, unless the key switch is pressed on the or, uh, turned on the dashboard, 
which will then uh, enable local controls, uh, which I have a, a single dispatch button and a status LED and a mode switch. The mode switch will actually send me back and forth between whether or not I want to run the script of the car or if I want to manually jog the car around the track. Um, so uh, I also have a limit switch and an e-stop. The limit switch will um, be pointed towards, towards the track and will roll over the top of uh, um, markers on the track, which will flip so I'll know where the car is on the track. And the e-stop will obviously uh, be a, a, a way to stop the car in case there's a problem. It'll be mounted to the upper back of the car in case someone needs to run up behind it and stop the car. Um, the motor controller is a, a saber tooth uh, controller. Um, it actually, actually can, can control two motors, but it's rated up to 60 amps and is designed to interface with uh, Arduinos. So this is the perfect kind of motor controller to use for this uh, application, I believe. Um, and I also switched down to one motor uh, with a transaxle. Um, over here, um, I have two meters that are on the dashboard of the car um, that the rider can actually see. It's a, a voltmeter and an amp meter uh, to show voltage and amps. Um, I, have, I learned the hard way that I also need a shunt, um, I guess it's called, um, for the amp meter. I had a, a lot of fun trying to figure out why that wasn't working, but I figured it out eventually. Um, so those actually look pretty cool on the dashboard and, and they're fully functional. I also have the audio here. So I mentioned the Windows 10 PC, which is giving it the audio. Uh, but you also have the, uh, that audio goes out to a mixer um, that is um, uh, mixing two channels. That's a four channel mixer, but I'll be using two of them. One will have the onboard audio of the ride itself, so there'll probably be a music track playing, um, as well as the sound effects from all the scenes. Um, and then the second input will be from the gun system that the rider will use, um, so that the gun sounds could be mixed in with the music and the sound effects all together for one experience. Um, and it will also get 9 volts of power from the uh, um, step-down converter that's uh, shown there as well. The speakers is an onboard uh, speaker bar, similar to what you have uh, in front of a TV. Uh, just It's the perfect width and fits in just under the dash. Um, very inconspicuous and looks really nice and, and, work, and works pretty nice as well. Uh, last thing to show you here is the auxiliary channels. So I have a second Wemos that's hooked up um, with the pure uh, focus on uh, the, uh, the, uh, the aux stuff. So it's all hooked up to control three relays. Um, channel one of the relays for the, for the onboard strobe lights. The second is for a fog effect, which I'm gonna have. And the third is for a uh, either a horn or a vibrator um, under the seat. I'm not sure which one I'm, I'm, I'm gonna do yet, but either way, um, that's all hooked up and ready to go. So that wraps up the current uh, wiring diagram. Uh, again, this could change if things change, but ultimately this is something I feel pretty satisfied with. Um, and uh, I, th I guess that's it for uh, episode three. If you have any questions, feel free to post uh, some comments, and I'll do my best to answer any questions. So I uh, hope you enjoyed this, this and uh, look forward to uh, episode four. Thanks for watching.